Welcome to the Five Phenomenon Podcast. I am your host, Shane Hazen, and with me again this week for two weeks in a row, Ted Haycraft. Yeah, though after being gut shot last week, I'm, I'm surprised I'm back. Uh, uh, Is it Wait, so I gut shot you and you're just like happy to be back? I don't you're know. Bleeding. I, I'm, a, I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. Yeah. Because so, I have a feeling, who knows what you're, what we're going to go about on this one. Did you, uh, what did you, um, I just got back. Uh, I went to a wedding in Austin. I should be wearing a mask right now, but I'm. Um, did you watch anything this week? Huh. Only thing I got in was um, uh, I got in this doc, uh, or I got in Borat. Did you see Borat yet? No. Yeah, it's it's weird how like in theory that movie is significantly better than the original, but the times they are changing, and so therefore it just does. It, even as they do crazier, ballsier stuff, like so much of it was shot in open, uh, avoiding quarantine, and with some really just really ballsy stuff. It's it just doesn't feel we're in a different world. It doesn't well, feel strong. It, it, it's turning into a, a Knock, Johnny Knoxville film. <laughs> No, it's even worse than that. Just because it's more like uh, you you expose the the people it exposes the, the things it gets them to say. You see that on um, Twitter feeds all the time right now, so it just doesn't ring as strong. The other cool movie I saw this week, right before I left, was something that's been on my uh, play or view list for a long time. Um, my, I don't know what you want. You want to call it a mockumentary? It's from 1965. It won the Academy Award for Best Documentary, even though it's a fictional movie. The War Game, the British movie. Oh yeah, right. I saw you know. I noticed that you watched that. Have yeah. you seen it? No, I've been. I'm very intrigued with this guy, uh, Watkins. Uh, yeah, yeah, Michael Watkins. And I've been wanting to uh, uh, gather up his stuff so that I can sit down and watch it. Uh, but yeah, I've been reading hit reviews of, uh, of some of the DVDs as they came out. I ended up um, watching a really terrible rip online, one where the sound kind of eventually went out of sync, but it, it's it's a movie about what would really happen in Britain during a, a nuclear war from 65. I mean, this is the same guy who did the where a camera crew is uh, in, uh, there's actually a, a camera crew, but during it's a, during the Middle Ages or the Renaissance period or something, and they're actually, Following this battle, do what? Do you know what oh, the one's gosh, called? Yeah, it's got one. It's a one-word title, no, and I've I, always uh, he's always been uh, playing around with that kind of stuff. It's it's effective. Uh, it's like a whole, you know, his his whole filmography is like, uh, you know, there, it's like a, a another just uh, territory explorer like Ken Loach, or some of these people that have been doing this stuff for years, and and over here in America we have, uh, if we don't, you know. If you don't, yeah, are not open. Uh, you don't pursue these things enough. You don't, you know, come across these great and whole terrific careers that we're missing. Well, out it was also. Uh, I don't know if it was on the uh, what's the British list of banned m- movies. It was. It was banned. A video from, nasty. No, not, I don't know if no. it was on the video nasties, but it was banned by the BBC for years. Oh, oh cause politically, because of political. Yeah, because it was too effective. Right. Apparently, yeah. It's. Um, and I, I heard it. I heard it a bit in negative turns after. Uh, uh, the Nicholas Meyer film, The Day After, which I watched only a few years ago for the first time, and they both they both work on me. Like one, they're not like, they they both have the same similar stark effect. I did watch a couple of interesting things. I, I do went over to the uh, Owensboro to the Malco. Oh, you went to a theater, Ted. One person. I was the only person in the auditorium. Okay, what was only it? person? What was it? Uh, it was a Fathom event. It was uh, the Memories of Murder. Uh, okay, that on the big uh, screen. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can condone that, but that's close. That's very close. Uh, and it was, uh, yeah, and of course, uh, it, the the reputation for it held up. And then wait, is was this your first time seeing it? Yes. Okay, cool. And I, as a bonus, at the end of the film, Edgar Wright and what's his name? Paul Jung Hoon. Yeah, did a uh, uh, virtual interview with each other. Cool. Uh, current a current interview, uh, and you, and and they're sitting in their their apartments and behind his uh, 
the uh, Parasite directors at all his video. You can see all his uh, discs mm-hmm. on the shelves. And Edgar Wright said, oh, I love that. I love the background you got there. He says, let me show you. And he turned his camera around. And across, uh, on the other side of the camera uh, was uh, Edgar Wright's wall of mm-hmm. art. And they're very, very strong proponents of uh, physical uh, media, of physical media, yeah. which I love. Um, so do we want to go ahead and get to this uh, week's movie, my pick? Yeah. Why is this your pick? Oh, uh, I wanted to pick a good Halloween movie. Wait, wait, no, okay. wait, no, no. You you had the best description when I told you what we were picking. You uh, said this is above our pay grade, and I I hadn't seen this movie in years. And when I was rewatching and taking notes, uh, I started thinking you maybe nailed this. It was a bit above our pay grade. Uh, I wanted to pick uh, intellectual pay grade. I wanted to pick a really um, cool Halloween movie, and I thought at the very least we'd be able to, um, if we couldn't figure out anything to talk about, this this movie has one an all-timer performance from Isabella Johnny. Just like, we could talk for an hour on Ooh. that one, but this is and- <laughs> Andre Zulowski's Possession from 1981. Right, and so, and I'm curious that uh, you wanted to pick a Halloween film, so... But why is this, is this a Halloween well, I mean, film? Yeah, I Did mean, I make you think that a, bad of a mistake you, on this? Well, I mean, because that's part of its history and reputation that because of the Carlos Rambaldi mm-hmm. creature, uh-huh. special effects in it, a lot of people want to lump this in a horror film. In fact, the U.S. version was cut. Mm. And I, I, this is my second time seeing it. I'm not entirely convinced. I may have seen the cut version the first time. Well, it, it was like 50... 5 50 minutes it's a cut out. A third of the movie is cut. Cut out, and then the, and then some strobing or a color ladder to it, and the effects, and and then they just play up the the, the the creature aspect of this film. But the, the but the thing is, part of the reason I might be thinking that I saw the theatrical cut is just because I'm not sure my first viewing it was impactful. It was something to see. It, it's it's anchored by some amazingly unhinged performances, <laughs> but I'm not sure it made sense. And this time through made more sense i think but i also you know just i had the foundation of a f- initial viewing through to watch but i well well when, when, when did you first see it uh not that long ago at belcourt uh see well i have a kind of an interesting history with it it's one of those films because of my uh, uh i don't know when to start the 90s uh with laser disc era and the video watchdog magazine starting mm-hmm. and bootlegs showing up and all these uh all these homemade video houses everywhere uh, uh, having exploitation films out at El Topo and getting all, and Jaroski films. And so I was very attuned and reading about a psychotronic magazine by Michael Weldon. Um, and I kept on coming across possession. And because of this creature aspect in the film, uh, it, it tends to show up a, a lot uh, as a... And the, the creature, it's 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 very impactful in the movie, yes. but it is not used that much. No, no, not it's at all. Not, it's, and, a very, it's, it, it's very effective when it comes in because the movie feels very um, manic the, up until that point. It feels very... Um, the movie's almost hysterical. kitchen... Hysterical. Hysterical. Kitchen sinky, almost. Like, right. just the throwing... It's straight drama, and then that element comes in, and it is... It gives this movie that it already, like you said, just out of control movie suddenly feels very controlled all at, all of a sudden. And you know, and and the reception was mixed and not that great. So, uh, I although think, as Johnny won Best Actor, said so can yeah, and I one. think a, and I think a lot of these exploitation mag- magazines and uh, writers on exploitation films kind of embraced it just like kind of as a a, a badge of honor because uh, because uh, of the monster aspect in it. They have they had an art film in their in their in their uh, in their category. So I actually was looking for this thing, and I would always, I've always, and I still to this day, will drop into video stores or places and look what they have to sell, and I came across, I found a VHS of it, and I was like so happy about it, but I don't think I ever got around to watching it. It's one of those, I'm a terrible... Uh, you're re- you are really bad about that. I'm really bad. Well, I mean, I mean, to be your fair. best friend, Dustin, well, I joked about because yeah. your best friend had a film series at University of Evansville. And he had me, he would have me come occasionally to uh, lead a discussion on it or something, and Dustin uh, would go. Uh, I, I'd always come in. And he goes, and it was every almost every time. Have you seen this film? I go, uh, no, but I do have it in my collection. 
There is a, you mentioned Edgar Wright earlier. Edgar Wright is, has a stack supposedly of DVDs of that. I'm guilty in this regard where you hold out because you want to see these on the big screen. I have a bunch of David Lee well, movies I still haven't seen because I want to see them on the big screen for the first time, which is really hard right now. No, I, I, no, I totally agree. That, that happened with the Street Card Desire. I, uh, the first time I ever got to see it was on the big screen and I'm so glad I did. I held out Godfather to for the first time wow. to see on the big screen. Gone with the Wind, I held out with <laughs> Showplay Seas. Show so, thought. yeah, so then I, I, I did find, you know, I, I had some DVDs of it, and I have uh, this big deluxe version of it. I still hadn't got around to watching it. Uh, well, maybe that came out to Belcourt, but the Belcourt down Nashville, I had a midnight showing uh, several years ago, not that long ago. Thirty-five millimeter. Would it have been twenty thirteen? Uh, anniversary of it, maybe. Possibly. I, I thought I saw a trailer from around then. Yeah, it could be. Oh, maybe it was out. Maybe it was circulating. But anyway, I went down. I went specifically just for that midnight showing in Nashville, and. Yeah. This is not a movie to see. And I came back home that night. I I get that it's a creature movie, but this is a lot to watch at midnight. Yeah, and uh, it was, uh, yeah, um, this is the kind of film if I saw back when it came out, and I saw the uncut version, not the American version, well, even probably the American version too, but... I would have gone. What? Are, what am I watching? What do I? What, I don't. I don't get this. I'm. This is way, just. At, this is just off the uh, off the rails. Well, when it played at Cannes, it was apparently a very po- uh, Polish. Even though the like, uh, um, Zawaski had been his previous film uh, on the Silver Globe was this very famous but sci-fi it, movie that uh, the Polish director of film t- took away from him when they were about. Uh, uh, four fifths of the way finished with filming, and the, the incomplete version played a can in '88, and supposedly is um, '88. Yeah, it was it, like, way it, after the ten years, yeah. like at least ten years. Like the, the and uh, I remember seeing a trailer of it at the AFS Cinema for it. That even with supposedly commentary explaining in the gaps, that it's this very amazing looking movie. Scorsese supposedly said it looked like a billion dollar movie, and he like. I haven't seen anything else of this. I feel I feel guilty. Like we talked about this earlier, you were maybe going to fill in some gaps. Did you watch anything else? Of well, this? no. Uh, and I know uh, I've re- I've read some stuff on his stuff, and and possession keeps on popping up over and over. And there's the 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 important thing is love, is another one that gets really a lot of attention. That's like Ro- a French movie, isn't With it? Romy that Schneider. after he um he he came on the scene in The Devils, and that supposedly was a controversial Polish film that got he keeps seeming like he left Poland and coming back. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it probably depends on, on what the government status was at the time. Did yeah, you, exactly. Because uh, in this movie, a big component that I missed and only after reading after the fact is the Berlin Wall is a huge part of this movie, and he wanted to film somewhere near communism and with a considering communism as a source of evil. And it was a hard take that I did not see. And having been banned from Poland multiple times, you could see this that's some, politically on his mind. What did you, uh, uh, where do you, you know, we, we uh, as film fans, you know, we, we know uh, we know of uh, Kubrick and Coppola and Wells, and we all have these statuses and reputation, and it gets a little tricky with the European directors because there's so many out, there's so much out there that to discover, and, uh, but, you know, of course, you know, uh, Fellini comes through, Truffaut comes through, Godard. Where do you, uh, where do you uh, stand with this guy? Uh, do you know I'm, much about him? Do you, no. Is this somebody who's on your pan, a no, pantheon not or only, canon? Or? Not only do I not know much about him, I started realizing I have such a blind spot for Polish cinema because they're, they're starting to name more name. I've seen a few Washington movies. Um, you're obviously a huge Kieslowski fan, oh, as, yeah. as am I. I. Not as strong as you. You, you are a very devoted Kieslowski person. Yeah, and of course, you know, and of course, Kozlowski only came on our radar when once he was hooked up with uh, Merrimax getting a, <laughs> getting a blue, red, white, and blue over well, here. And I mean, there yeah. there was a few people that seen Decalogue when yeah. it came to And America. the double life of Veronique. We're going to future guest, uh, Henry uh, Boutash, uh, his film, uh, The Atlantic Story, is playing at the Denver Film Festival in about a week or two. And he was telling me that. Uh, the Decalogue also made its American premiere at that same film festival. Oh yeah, I'd I'd be interested to see the big screen. So do we want to go ahead and go into the plot of this movie in as much as it was? Uh, Yeah. Um, Is it my, it's my job to do it since uh, I pick, right? Sure. Go ahead. Um, so this movie, okay, I also wanted, would want to talk in Zawaski's, um, 
the autobiographical background because supposedly this movie's a movie about divorce. It's a, a very um, metaphorical movie about this divorce, and um, it's about us. Sam Neill plays a spy um, who comes back, and his wife wants to leave him, and they have a child together, and they decide to leave each other, and. I don't know. It just—it's hard to describe because it just spirals from there. Because then it starts becoming more metaphorical. Um, there's doppelgangers involved. There's extra creatures involved. Um, the- yeah. Well, and that's the thing. That's that's that's, that's the curious thing about it. You're using the word metaphorical, because the plot just just kind of goes from there. Because you know, uh, as we said, there's a creature involved. And the creature, to be fair, doesn't come in until like about half an hour in. And typically, uh, a, 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 a different type of film dealing with this. Divorce would use, uh, would not show you the creature. Uh, it or it maybe imply it. There, or, and supposedly there, the writer of the movie thought that was a good idea of a Polish critic that uh, they showed an early draft of the script said you need to shoot that way. So basically what had happened was Zawaski was married to um, an actress who was in his first two movies, uh, M- Malgorzata Brunick and... Um, I get I get two different timelines. I don't know what storyline or what uh, what really happened, but supposedly he came back from the shooting of a movie, and no, that's when the the globe was taken away from him. This is this. Would it have been he came back from that and that? Well, because that's falling apart. He comes back from there and he sees that she's been cheating on her, and, and that falls apart. Yeah, and there's the one story was that he came back and he found his child left with jam on his face, which is a scene that comes up in the movie. But then there's another version he tells of the movie where he came back from this movie and um, a Polish uh, pers- man who worked at Paramount drove him out, uh, flew him out to New York and had him start to work early on the movie. And the and he wrote an early version of the script. The money ran out and that guy ended up marrying his wife. Oh, so, I hadn't heard that part. Yeah, there's two different versions of this story that don't entirely sync up. But... This movie comes from in in between seeing my first time and the second time. Basically, it's a, it's a very passionately made movie by a director whose wife left him, who wanted to write a vaguely horror based movie about a man who comes home and his wife might or not be possessed by the devil or evil somehow, and that causes him to leave their marriage, or at least it brings out something on the unhinged on the end of their marriage i mean so the movie ends up being very weird my second this most recent viewing the movie gets oddly moralistic i mean the movie opens with shots of the berlin wall and crosses where people had died along the berlin wall and crosses become a severe part of it god gets mentioned so many times in this movie jesus is shown a few times i don't know the devil doesn't actually get mentioned in here but the creature might or might not represent Satan of some sort or some sort form of evil. Although what's funny is there is a, as Zawaski has a dare at one point where he says, I dare you to explain the thing, which is what he calls the creature. I dare you to explain evil. And I actually do have an interpretation of the movie is that we may need to wait till we get to the end of it before we, and we know the ending of it, but doppelgangers are a big part of this movie. Um, uh, he, Sam, so Sam Neill's character, uh, Mark, uh, his wife, Anna, decides to leave them, and he goes on a bender. There's this great elliptical cut where suddenly, you know, this clean-shaven spy uh, who uh, has a scene also early on where he's told that he needs to find his successor. Uh, his wife leaves him, and then suddenly he's got a huge three-week, five o'clock shadow beard, whatever, and he's been drinking. He looks like a heroin addict, or at least he sweats like a heroin addict, and there's a back and forth where he has to take care of, of his his son, and maybe the marriage might survive. Maybe she might come. Then there, there's this drama going on with Heinrich, the man who's leaving her for, and he there's clearly established early on that both of them had been cheating on each other. Although the drama in the movie comes around from the Anna character, Johnny uh, Isabel Johnny's character cheating on him now that supposedly is the high drama even though it's established they were cheating on each other at one point and 
the performances in this movie really are the price of admission. They really are the reason to watch this movie just because they're so unhinged. You know, whenever you see bad performances that go out there, what always happens without fail is that uh, the director at some point got his actors convinced, you can trust me. And what happens in some really bad versions of this is that actor shouldn't have trusted the filmmaker. I think for the most part, they were smart in, in letting themselves, they let these actors let themselves go. And Ajani in particular, when I first saw this movie, I remember writing friends about it and I said, she is inhumanly beautiful in this movie. She's just astonishingly gorgeous. But the word inhuman is what I think is more effective in this movie just because there's something so outworldly, otherworldly about her. Well, let me ask you, what's your experience with her? Her, Because this is, like, I had seen a few movies of her. I'd seen uh, Polanski's The Tenet. I'd seen, I'm a big fan of Walter Hill's The Driver, which I know you are a bigger fan of. And what else? I mean, I, you know, obviously she has her performance. Queen in, Margot and... Uh, of course, I haven't seen the, the her, her big uh, her big uh, epic that she produced and helped. Right? She did a little bit of everything on it. Uh, was called that Camille, Camille kind of yeah, Castillo, whatever. Castillo yeah, or whatever. whatever. It, she got an Oscar nomination right. for that. She's uh, she's uh, in Ishtar, but she's kind of got a nothing role in that. Uh, I remember her as a kid. That was her second, because her, was her other Oscar nomination? What was the early one that she got? Oh, Adele H., the yeah. Truffaut movie. I yeah. have seen that, but I saw that after this, and, you know, she, she's great in that, but... Um, yeah, but let me ask you this. Are, uh, well, let me... Have you seen the uh, Diabolique remake? Is that anything? No, because I think it, it got so... It got such critically trashed at the time, and I, I, I've never really... I've never really, tell you the truth, warmed up to Sharon Stone. So I just kind of... Uh, I'm well, Sharon Stone's like got her main roles of like Basic Instinct at Casino, but something like that. Well, this is her coasting on that. She was she was still a hot property. Uh, and it, did, of, uh, it, it just it seems like an unfortunate idea. That yeah, it and, and I should, I mean, I shouldn't let that stop me, but I think, you know, the, you know like I said, I'm not a full-time paid critic, so I don't get to see, I don't, I can't pick... I can't, excuses, excuses. I can't grab everything. Ted. And now, you know, it's like, well, I wonder why I didn't go see that. Well, you, there's there's so many movies that, like, were trashed at the time, and you, when you rewatch it, it was a chore, and you're like, I just saw this out of obligation. Life's too short. Right. So. Excellent. But uh, the uh, let me ask you this, because, you know, here I go back to... i never forget, uh, I think Martin Scorsese talked about how, you know, as a... Growing up and being a movie watcher in America, you know, you have certain foundations and basics and plot narrative acting and of course you know the the the, the, the ultimate hollywood movie is like the camera everything's invisible you get sucked into the story and, and everything's realistic you know in, in terms of like it's reproducing life in front of you and you're experiencing it and this movie isn't doing that no because this movie's all wide on the lenses well it's not, very... not so much that the acting i mean you do people talk and act and argue as much as consistently through this film as in real life. I mean, right off the bat, I, I it's like... Uh, My memories of this movie were fondly because of uh, Isabel Gianni is so gorgeous in this movie that I almost, you almost give her the benefit of the doubt from her, the, the big acting in it. But Sam Neill acts almost as big in many scenes. And then you get uh, the Heinrich character who's got this bizarre... Well, that one dancer-like sequence, like where, sequence where he keeps yeah. getting in Sam Neill's face and like, uh, and he's like he's he, like he's stuck like on some kind of uh, drug. Yeah, he's talking he, to him. Well, that ends up becoming a plot point, but right. like, but he's yeah, it's a confrontational scene where he's like, "Yes, I've been fucking your wife," and 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 then they end up getting in a fight, and Sam Neill's a spy who gets his ass kicked by this uh, Polish well, dancer. Well, you think about this thing as spy? I'm not so. I, I don't think it's as clear cut. Is he a spy or not? I mean, yeah, I think the a, the in between of the dialogue seems to imply that this is one of those details where I read up before and after in between seeing it, and they make a bigger deal about the spy. The thing is that he needs to find his replacement becomes a bigger point later. The and the the other big reason I thought this would be a fun ho like easy thing to talk about or at least fun movie to talk about is there is one scene in this movie 
that is the memorable scene. It's the thing you you know the subway scene. You know what I'm talking right. about. Right, and you uh, and you told you, you you read or heard what the director told her her, her instruction was to f- uh, was it fuck air or th- the pretend air. you were fucking air. The air, yeah. Yeah. The air. Fuck, the, fucking the air. Like, cause I actually wrote down. I I heard. I didn't hear that until after I saw the movie a second time. I just remember writing down. How the hell do you? What does a director tell an actress for that scene? Cause this scene is. I I I didn't. When I first saw this movie, I didn't know that. I didn't. No one had told me about that scene. Mm. And it just comes up, and it's a, it's him telling a scene about. It's it's like a, a it's a miscarriage with. Uh, the devil's baby, maybe, and like, this, or is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or is it? Yeah, that's a good point. But like, or the, is it the opposite of a miscarriage? It's, she's it, actually giving birth. You know, I mean, it's just, it's very. Uh, well, but the scene starts out just like you said, just just histrionics, just just crazy. This is and Isabella then, Shani. She's down in the subway of Berlin, and, and she's carrying and, uh, like milk and eggs, right. and then she starts. Going and shit. and smashing it. And then this and goes she on for starts a while. hitting eggs and milk against the wall. And, but then the special effects start coming in and she starts oozing this just like it's... It's even out of her ears. It comes out of her head. Yeah. It's like this mixture between blood and milk. Yeah. And it's... It is... I, Isabella John... Like I've heard people say this is one of the greatest performances in film history. And I think... I don't know. I, I that's that's hyperbolic. Oh really? Oh it's no, no 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 no. It's hyper. But it, no, I I think that I I think it is. Yeah. You because you just these are these are one of those home runs that happen every once in a while. Like like would you want to watch this on a double feature next to Heath Ledger's Joker or something like that? Like is it is it something that's like lightning in the bottle? Like a great actress with um, a director who just happens to give her the right a length of leash to like go crazy because the thing that's so amazing about the performance is like she alternates between these like going crazy crying with her eyes wide open and then like she'll start screaming and then suddenly she'll just like start acting insanely calm with her eyes very wide open oh, just and- like very saucer like porcelain face just gorgeous porcelain face um she might have had some kind of like saliva or blood on that dress that she wears over and over throughout the movie and you get and you get to point out the fact uh sam this character runs into his kid's teacher and it's a it's a double ganger it's a double ganger it's a with really some, Johnny. with very bad green contacts but yeah. that becomes an important factor uh with the creature did you notice the green a, sheets no 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 the second appearance of the green creature did you notice the green eyes yeah well that that's one of those ones you notice in the sheets second too. At, at one point, uh, Are they, I didn't. Yeah, uh, the, when she's on the, the bed, where they. Uh, in fact, I, I I made this point. This is kind of stuff, uh, that uh, I I I thought it's like, yeah, you notice something when you're watching the movie, but you don't take note of it, and that's. But if you think about it, the stuff that you do notice that sticks out to you, you should take note of it because it's it's probably a clue. Or something to connect to what what the well, it, meaning of the film is. The movie is so deceptively messy that whenever there's an obvious detail, this movie's so planned out for something that's so unhinged and messy and manic. Yeah, but I just it, get back but to it the, knows what it's doing. Yeah, get back to the you know. I just I think if uh, I had seen this back in the early uh, when it came out in the eighties, I wouldn't have been prepared for it. Uh, it was it's um, it's pitched at such a hysterical level. It stays there. And you're going well. This is just biz- this is absurd. This is bizarre. This isn't. But it's got a hypnotic spell. But oh, but but well, you got. You, you, do you, you think? You, well, if you if you if that's going to bug you, uh, it's going to bug you. But if you go, okay, well, at least I could really enjoy the performances, the camera work. And you notice it's editing. I love those really weird. Uh, abrupt cuts that he does. They, with sound and, they and, do that and, so much, and it, it's it's just it's like. Tension, release, tension, yeah. release. It's, 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 it gets on the verge of a gimmick, but it's also like you, you don't re- it's also something you don't realize you need until it, it, he does it. And right. they do it so much. Um, but, but I, I like uh, this one. Uh, I wrote this down from the booklet that came with my uh, disc. It says, an art, is this an art house for the grindhouse? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's because he was very uh, aware that the previous film was him putting in some sci fi in. And but he mask. 
He, he's a, he's all about mask. You'll use that word a lot. He mentioned uh, Grimm's fairy tales when talking yeah. about this. Yeah, and mask, you know, science fiction, horror. Yeah. He uses these sayings as a way to discuss much more heavier topics. It's just not a science fiction film. It's not just a creature horror film. This, there's, <laughs> that's almost the. Uh, in many ways, when you when you first saw the creature, what what did you think it was? Because it didn't. They're definitely not going for like some basic worm or phallus, but it gets snake like at first. I think uh, kind of plant like a little. It's Car it's Carlo Lombardi who had done um, some alien work. Close work. Encounters. He uh, did uh, E.T. He will do eventually do E.T. after this. And, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, he he works very famously with. Um, uh, David Lynch on Dune, so he works with Lynch, Spielberg, and Zulowski. But there's also there's, there's something about the creature that feels like it's the natural follow up that no one else took off of Eraserhead. Well, I know there's a lot of couple couple of essays I read they were draw, name dropping that in Eraserhead, and uh, just because it's it's the it's it's a creature that I don't know if disgust is the right term, but it's supposed to elicit a feeling and it's a very emotional feeling from this creature well here's here's going to be uh but it's about uh turmoil and love and a relationship that gets toxic or at the very least like um, very messy well here's an interesting take i especially i zoned in this time watching it I'm a child of divorce, mm -hmm. and you're a child of divorce I as, as well. Uh, but my mom, we think possibly she was bipolar, and uh, I went through some uh, bizarre. I, I witnessed it, or have memories of some bizarre things that happened as the marriage was dissolving and falling apart. Mm -hmm. uh, that I really don't care to go into. There's a couple of things that would go really that really. Uh, my sister remembers one thing I don't really remember. I'm like, really? But um, I'm thinking, I was kind of thinking, this is sort of my reaction to you, my parents. The child the was hysterical. much more significant to, in my viewing, this viewing too. Right. And Especially the child's last scene. That, yeah. is, that last well, scene we, is Well, yeah, I want to specifically talk about that because I came up with an interpretation. Oh, that really? That is my personal take on it. Uh, but the... Um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. You know what? When I w when I was younger, uh, the, the divorce finally came into place when I was a, a freshman in high school. But yeah, I'm much younger in grade school, and some of the sequences with my mom and dad, and the yelling sequences, and some of the things that I experienced, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I kind of think I'm thinking it, it was at that level in my mind, happening to me on that hysterical, crazy level. So he's trying to capture that. I think. And, and and put this into a cinematic terms. Yeah. And well, I mean, but you also got to under like the vantage point on the autobiography is him coming at it from um, he is the Sam Neill character and he's writing about his son. If that's the vantage point you're thinking of, which makes I, yeah, I'm with no, you there's, I know mean, there's I think he, I think this thing he was very uh, I I don't know how he did it, but I think uh, it's one of those films that you can you can glean several different interpretations out of it and several uh, several ways to go well, with you know, that. You know what movie I'm thinking of now? Roma. Uh, yeah. Which, I mean, there's a divorce happening in there and the director is a main character in there and he's empathizing in a way where he's wanting to make the main character, even though he is a main character in the narrative, the main narrative is around another character who is also an autobiographical real person that he's empathizing and trying to make the main source of the movie. Of course, the advantage to Roma uh, that he has over this is because it's grounded in a reality type. Yeah, this yeah, is I mean, I mean you can re you go, well, that's how people act, and this is how it happened. And uh, this thing is just off the rails again. Um, just operatic, grand gunal. But at the same time, it's shot in this. It's shot in this one specific area of West Berlin by the Berlin Wall. So it's got this very <laughs> real setting to it. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I like the. I um, guess like Rome. Here's Roma a quote too. from the uh, 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 an interesting essay. He says Anna, Anna, and Mark are experiencing a situation which cannot be explained. If it could be, as Zulowski says, divorce would never happen. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm like, well, okay. That's 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 something. That's we'll do. We'll do we, that. You know. Well, are are we are we winding down to our last points? You have a lot more because I think we both want to. We both have interpretations of the ending. I think. We yeah. No. Well, well, I do want to. I, I did make a little observation. Also, I, of course, I, I wrote down starts in a high pitch. 
that just never lets go. It is I mean, you better does. buckle in. No. If you I mean, you can't take the speed, just get out. You, okay, get for, out of for my Halloween interpretation, this is kind of has some horrific moments. It oh. has some moments that just really get you on edge. It's like it's almost like uh, in some ways it's like uh, Lynch and Cronenberg on t- uh, you know on. Uh, oh, I felt so bad when I was first telling someone I was doing this and I was describing the movie to them. They said, "Oh, is it like The Brood?" Which I had just seen recently a few yeah. uh, months back. And yeah. I said, "I said, oh no, no, The Brood's more plot heavy and more um, almost comic booky." But no, rewatch it. No, The Brood is a very yeah. Uh, clear. Oh, I thought the weird. I, I, this is just an observation, and nobody mentioned it in the essay I wrote. When he's doing his almost like real near the beginning, he's like going through withdrawal on the bed, and he's just. Like, it's a, I mentioned earlier the heroin sweat. Right, yeah. right. The uh, the Sinatra, I, I, one position made me think of Frank Sinatra and the, the Man with the Golden Arm. <laughs> okay. uh, and, I mean, I don't know if that was on purpose or not. Uh, uh, I mean, it's Sam Sam Neill was he was coming off my brilliant year. Originally, Judy Davis was yeah, maybe going to be in this Sam movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so it was going to be a re, re uh, Judy Davis. Sam Neill uh, reuniting right after that, but yeah. It, well, it turns out you know he uh, uh, he couldn't uh, get uh, Isabel uh, Johnny turn him down. Yeah, initially. But, but she's she's sleeping. She was uh, living with the uh, the cameraman, the, cameraman. the, the, the dra- or director of photography. Goes, they were ta- it, they were interviewing. Yeah, me. he goes, yeah. "Well, who would you want?" And he goes, "Well, she turned me." No, 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 no. He suggested yeah. her. Yeah. And um, and then and then and he goes, and, "Wait, and, wait, and, wait and, we get back with you." And all of a sudden, yeah, he's like, he got to, he's, and Zawaski's like, they, she turned me down. And he's like, give me a few days, yeah, give me a day or something like that. Um, I like the uh, oh some humor. I thought. Uh, that's all this stuff I did kind of I found a couple places the uh, uh, where he uh, confronts Heinrich think, and he goes <laughs> Heinrich in general and he goes he go, yeah and he goes you want me uh, I mean, you want me to break the door down and Heinrich goes uh, you don't have to it's open <laughs> <laughs> and then the, and then the 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 the, uh, the uh, investigators. How bad of a tracker that guy was. He they he hires an investigate private investigator, so the private gave they send out a guy to track Isabella Johnny, and it's so obvious. And they he, they have such a they she looks at him and they just pretend like they almost do like the hair combing. Thing yeah, it's just it's, like it's so ridiculous and over the top and and and, and dorky silly. That I read one plot interpretation. I did not get this from the movies. Did you understand that they were lovers? Who's the that? two detectives were lovers. Uh. Yeah, it, 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 it's uh, once the other one comes to the uh, find out that he's dead. Mm-hmm. It's that's that it, it, it's obvious right from there. Oh, I guess I, I just didn't get it. Maybe oh, okay. Um, My head was in elsewhere. <laughs> uh, some interesting phrases like "God is a disease." Oh yeah, do, do we? I do we want to go through all the and God then, listings uh, in here? Because you say "I" for me. How, you know, how do, uh, from the video or from the uh, film, the that home Heinrich movie, the little Schwe- home movie that she leaves. That, yeah. And then I, I, I talk about Heinrich, that physicality he does. It. There's this one sequence where he's just talking. He comes to see Sam and starts talking to him, and he's doing like this Willy Wonky ballet dance gyrations as he talks to him. Um, and then, uh, how about the the miscarriage? There was Sister Faith, and what was left is Sister Chance. So I had to take care of my faith to protect it. There. Uh, yeah, some of these lines are very spot on. I was I was writing a lot of these down to be like, is, is this going to be interpretation? A lot of these were. I don't like to use the word pretentious just because I think it's typically misused. <sighs> but some of them were just like, you know. No, there's going to be, that's one reason he got, this film has an interesting reputation. A lot of people uh, slap it with pretentiousness. And I, I can see if somebody says that and 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 says that's what I think it is. I'm the, like I can't argue with them. There's that line from the trailer: "We are all the same in different bodies, like insects and meat." It's in the trailer, even. Uh, also, I like this uh, Stephen uh, Thrower who did a really uh, big long essay on him, uh, and this interviewed him. He says Zazowski's concerns are philosophical and religious. They are very rather, religious, rather than psychoanalytical. Which makes him inaccessible to critics. Sure, uh, that's I mean you know. Yeah, uh, I mean it, you you and I get into this every once in a while where I it's it's just my natural uh, rebellion growth spiritually is like I really want to reject Judeo Christian uh, symbolism. Like I'm just tired of it because I grew up with well, so much you of it. Right off the bat, and this was, movie with the cross. Yeah, well, the crosses are all over this movie. I mean, at one point she says, uh, it, it, at the end, she's like, do you believe in God? It's in me, which I thought actually was an interesting interpretation just because it's like God and evil being inside her at the same time is, is fascinating. But at the same time, like, 
I was raised with so much you know, Christian framing of everything that I now find myself finding it a little tired. But do you want? So before you want, get to the ending, one other thing I ask you: What about the sequence where he's slapping the crap out of her? Did I bug you? What do you mean? Well, because of you, how, you, you how were, I reacted last week. Yeah, because you you were bugged by Connery. You hit knocking her out. No, because it's a marriage dissolving, and it's a it's it's a, a Sam Neill's going to be punished for it by being left by his wife, or his wife is. Oh. No, no, no. That's clearly the next. There's a difference between the movie thinking it's funny and the version of like it's tragic or it's sad that she. I just, I just, yeah, I, I just, I, now I'm kind of a little bit sensitive to any time I'm going to see well, this the, stuff now. You know what's funny is what follows up that slapping is the m- moment I think the movie first like really signals it's going to go off the hinges is when she's got the blood in the street and uh, she runs into the car that's carrying the other cars and that car crashes and throws <laughs> all those cars everywhere. It's like in the middle of this domestic squabble, a Michael Bay stunt happens. <laughs> it's yeah, it's. I mean, in some ways, if you know, even if you don't buy into the uh, the artiness of it or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's a fun film to watch. It's a lot. There's a lot of great sequences in it and camera work and editing. I think at the and very least, set the, design. The reason I was happy to recommend this as a Halloween movie is it is even if you think it's pretentious, it is. Or if you, for some reason, are not taken with the Isabella Gianni performance, it is one of the most batshit movies. <laughs> it is so batshit, and like, and, and not in that like bad movie good no it's like it's like it's it's a deliberate bad shitness yeah this. well yeah. no yeah i agree so okay interpretation of the ending which do we should spo- spoil the very final scene which by the way is also in the trailer those green eyes that are coming from the creature the creature is eventually forming a doppelganger of mark the yeah. sam neil character at the end who somehow survives all the gunfire when everyone else gets hit um so, so we're left with now the the, the uh, basically the real Mark and Anna are dead, and the doppelgangers are alive, mm-hmm. and the son is with the Isabella Jolie's uh, Helen or the uh, doppel her mm-hmm. doppelganger at her apartment, mm-hmm. and that and all of a sudden the door's knocking and it's the Sam Neill. Well, we think it's the Sam. You know, we, we you assume. can you can kind of see yeah, pretty yeah, clearly I, through the glass that it. I I think they 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 weren't trying to obfuscate that. No, I don't think it's so either. But I, I bet I mean if I'm sure there's somebody out there going, well, is it really? When you do okay, so when you go back to the beginning of the movie and you have them both admit that they were having affairs. What led uh, Isabella Johnny to going insane is the fact that she had to live with her doppelganger already being around. I forget how many times if Helen mentions Helen mentions she's like I've met your mother, so she had to know that that creature was already there because Neil had probably had the affairs first. He probably precipitated all of this, and then you get to the end confrontation at the ending, and I don't know, just it just. It doesn't it makes sense to me. I don't know. It makes an emotional sense to me. Yeah, emotionally and personally, it makes sense to me. This is almost kind of looking back at how I reacted to my parents' roof, a divorce. Mm-hmm. This is what happened. The world came to an end because the bombs are falling. We hear bombs falling. Basically, World War Three breaks out at the end of this film. It is so weird how it happens. And too. the kid, what does the kid do? Don't also, don't. He keeps open saying the door. over and over, don't open, don't, don't open. And then he jumps into the bathtub. We know, we've seen him playing how how long he can hold his uh, his breath underwater, but we never see him come back up. He just he jumps in the bathtub, and he's the down. kid kind of kills himself at the end of the movie. I mean, to be fair, that is you can know, you can interpret that. Yeah, you don't. But you, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give you my no, interpretation. No, I, I interpret it as not, and if metaphorically, I'm interpreting this is what I did in my life with my parents. My parents became separate, different entities to me. Yeah. The world came to an end for me. Wow. And I went and hid in wow. my life. Uh, I went, I, I, the, the, it, it changed the trajectory of my life. Wow. Yes, I'm, I'm in the same boat. So that's ex- how, I'm like, this is exactly what happened to me. I'm in the same boat, this, but I was film. too young. So that, this, like, it would be more what my, how my brother reacted. Well, I was, like I said, a freshman in high school and... Uh, you yeah. know, I have I have a friend and some family members. How like, how old is the kid in this movie? Do you think? <sighs> oh gosh, that's a good question. I'm terrible at ages. He looks he looks like about six or seven, right? Yeah, eight, six, seven, eight. Okay, like I was six when my parents yeah. divorced. And so. uh, I I go wow, I can I totally can uh, relate to this ending. Um, Just an apocalyptic in the world. Well, and is she going to open the door or not? 
Well, the other key thing I was pointing out, uh, was going to point out at the beginning is, I've mentioned it earlier, um, Mark was supposed to find his replacement, and he fulfilled his job. He found his replacement with his own doppelganger. And what it is, both the doppelgangers are very docile and very agreeable. And so what I think it is, is this movie's a giant metaphor for uh, relationships, especially ones that disintegrate, where the messiness is something we're always trying to kill in each other's partners to find some kind of peaceful, docile agreeability with each other. Speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, we got. We, I, I, I don't. This, you might not even use this, uh, but the um, uh, there's another character that was cut out of the film. Yeah, the husband. And the, you see his girlfriend Anna, at the Anna's, end. Anna's first husband. And the girlfriend is the one who helps the doppelganger escape at the at the end of the film. Which she seems like completely yeah, under his like, control for some reason. And, and I thought and I didn't know that that was supposed to be a club foot, but I thought it it almost doubled for Marguerite's. Uh, of uh, cast foot to cast, uh, mm. I'm like well, that's weird. Uh, yeah, it's bar- apparently Azani's character uh, was mar- uh, uh, she was uh, married prior to Sam to an older man who was. But that a, that was written out of an earlier. Was, yeah, it only three scenes. They, they, didn't, they didn't even. Uh, yeah, he was a it. writer. And, well, but going to the end of the world, I like your interpretation. I really think that's interesting. But I fe- I retroactively felt like I ignored the political of this movie, which like. So well, he makes a big deal about that was an important part to him. Yeah, I know he, I, he says he makes a big deal, but I don't think it t- takes a real back seat. There's these just two or three random shots of the wall, you know, and then the, the and the, and then the, and the but vagueness the location, of his but and the, the location and the location and the vagueness of his job, and uh, it's there, but the other stuff, the religious and the hysterical, and uh, the, the creature and all that, it just is so powerful. That the political stuff gets overshadowed, I think. So you're going to say and the bombs? So like, you know, in fact, I'm thinking bombs, bombs. You know, the war at the end had nothing to do with the the two of them getting together, and making some kind of apocalypse, some kind of political apocalypse. Well, no, I mean that, that's another way to go with it. I mean, I mean, that's just like I said, it's like uh, mm, I like your interpretation better, actually, Ted. <laughs> But uh, I mean, there's I think there's several ways to interpret this ending, but I, it really as you should based on the way this is the way the film is pitched at you. Yeah. But I just was amazed that that it really kind of hit home that ending for me because trying to I thought about it I th- and I'm like yeah and because uh, I, I had already once I had gotten the zone of this level of, of hysteria that I remember my parents' arguments and I remember thinking how high pitched they were to me as a little kid. Uh, yeah, see, I wasn't witness to a lot of my parents' and arguments. And so, yeah, and uh, I remember, you know, cops being called, baby to the house, and really? things like that. And then I had to experience some things with my mother post-divorce that even were crazy or, or kind of wacky, too. I have some of those. But, and uh, yeah. so, yeah, so that so I had I was already in that zone, and so when that ending hit, and I'm thinking, and they, they show the little boy jumping the pool, the water, and the bombs are coming down, and uh, is she going to let him in or not? And, and they're doppelgangers. I'm like... Oh my gosh. Okay, so to wind down, I want to propose this to you question to you. As a movie about, um, as we're about to hit month, f- finish month seven of the quarantine, going to month eight of it, and you know there's a lot of stress being put on these cooped up uh, relationship couples <laughs> that might be dissolving one way or another, did I actually pick the right Halloween movie for 2020? Well, there you go. Well, there you go. I. <laughs> Yeah, I mean... Success. <laughs> horror is in the eye of the beholder. It's a freaky movie. Um, it is... And you want a monster? You get a monster. You get a monster. It is... Um, I stand by it. I stand by my pick. Uh, so, is there anything else, Ted, or is that it? No, I, I'm... Uh, it's exhausting. It's, <laughs> it's exhausting. To watch the movie and try to talk about it. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious now... They had trailers for the other his other films on the disc, and I, I looked at the trailers. And I'm like, okay, it's time to start tackling the other ones. I have them; they're sitting on my shelf. Oh, you got to get to them because it's not going to be a big screen experience for you anytime soon. But yeah. I do want to say that I think um, just going to um, you know pat our ourselves on the back, but I think we made our pay grade on this one. I hope. I, I I'm surprised. I was really scared uh, going into <laughs> it. Well, uh, thanks everybody for listening. I uh, hope you can come back next week.